Hi, I'm Chuck McPhillamy from the Marietta Police Department, public information officer. Proud to announce that we have reductions in major crime yet again in the city. Uh, it's, and thanks to advancements in technology that the city and the police department have embraced, such as what you see behind me with drones, license plate reader technology, and fingerprint readers that we can use for scanning someone on the side of the road to figure out what their true identity is. Hi, I'm with Marietta Power and Water, and we are so proud to be a part of the city and to support the city in very, very vital areas. We like to be a quiet utility. We like to have power. Every time you flip a switch at home, at work, it supports so much of our life, technology, and so much of what we do. And then water, every time you turn on that faucet, there is clean, safe drinking water. And that is the essence of life. It supports, oh, so much in our home and offices and everyday lives, as well as manufacturing. And then, of course, our customer care department just keeps things rocking smoothly from getting your service to paying your bill. We are just so pleased to be serving you all, especially during the pandemic. We've been here every day. We hadn't missed a beat in terms of power and water. And that's something you just don't even have to think about. Merida Public Works has been busy this past year. We've completed the Roswell Street improvement projects uh, over on the square. And then we've got two other new projects coming up. Powder Springs Improvement Project, Streetscape Project, and the uh, Fairground Street Improvement Streetscape Project. We're also in the middle of our uh, annual resurfacing project. We'll be resurfacing 12.5 miles of streets um, we're about halfway through right now, so uh, we'll be reserved and be completing that here in the next month or so, and then um, we'll continue on with our rest of our SPLOST and other improvement projects as we're moving forward. Hey, good morning. It's a pleasure to be speaking with you. Uh, today we're featuring a lot of the Parks Bond projects that we've completed over the past 10 years since voters approved the Parks Bond referendum in 2009. We were very fortunate that the voters passed a referendum for 25 million. Uh, with interest income and the bond premium, we have almost $27 million to spend. And to date, 26 million of that has been spent. We've been able to touch 21 of our 23 parks and recreation properties with improvements. Uh, we acquired two new parks that we developed. And uh, we've had great success, especially with our most recent projects, which was the Elizabeth Porter Park Playground. Uh, and spray ground, which we were fortunate to open up uh, near the beginning of July, and uh, that's been a success even in these trying times. The Marietta Fire Department is pleased to welcome seven new recruits that completed their training last week and went on shift on Sunday. We're also pleased to announce the arrival of our new 2020 KME Heavy Rescue that will be operating out of Station 55 on Franklin Gateway. And as we continue to move through the COVID crisis, we're going to look for new and innovative ways to be out there to promote our BMFD Safe home safety programs. City of Marietta employees have worked diligently through the COVID-19 pandemic. If you are interested in becoming a City of Marietta employee, we have it posted on our website at mariettaga.gov under Employment Opportunities. Mayor Tomlin is a highly accomplished public servant, holding many offices and positions of leadership. I can tell you it was hard to uh, condense all of this since I was told to brief. But uh, he has served as a member of the Georgia House of Representatives, chairman of the Marietta Board of Education, an elected member of the Board of Directors of the Municipal Electric uh, Association of Georgia. He presently serves as chairman of the Marietta Board of Lights and Water, as well as mayor of the city of Marietta. It is my honor and privilege to present my friend and mayor, Steve Tellman. I have to turn this up. <laughs> Holly, welcome. hello again. Thank you for bringing that up. That's what it feels like today as we've all been indoors for five months, limited access, can't go to church, can't send, in my case, our grandchildren to school. So we're, it's just a light to be out. Um, a, a outgoing president, like Mary Angie said, that's the best job in the world, a best president. Uh, <laughs> And to Mary Ansley, I want to say, it's a thrill, it's kind of symbolic. Her mother was a friend of mine for years. She was a great mayor of the city of Marietta. I see her children back there, but 
There was nobody finer than Ansley. And, uh, And she got, she's not as honored as her dad, so I'm glad you took after your mama. So that, <laughs> I like to tease, right? But it, it is, but like I say, why for Mary Ansley wouldn't be here today. This was a major visionary thing that the city council did while Mary Ansley was mayor. And th this is still keeping on giving back. This is Hilton and the conference center. So thank you very much. The, I, there's also another former mayor in here today. Bill Dunaway, and I've spent two days trying to think of something nice to say about him. Wow. <laughs> and then it finally came to me, Doc came in. So he, uh, and like, it, and Bill knows this for, for over, been several years, over 50 years, I've apologized to the city of Marietta and to the Howell family in Cartersville because my dad introduced Bill and Dot and uh, they got married and I was at their wedding when he whisked her away in a helicopter. So uh, uh, Bill's been a good friend, he's a great mayor. A lot of things we'll talk about today. There's been a continued flow, Marietta's done well. So Bill, I want to thank you for your service just like we did for um, Ansley Meadows. But I also want to... Even though I've spent two and a half days writing this speech, the more I can talk about other things, the better. But I do want to, Handy opened the door. He said he'd been city attorney for 30 years. I was there that night when Joe Mack Wilson vetoed my law partner for being city attorney and appointed Doug Handy. And that, <laughs> I think it was the first veto ever by uh, Mayor Joe Mack, but that was fun. And Joe Mack used to refer to Doug Handy and his interest in leadership Cobb is what finished his school for yuppie. So uh, there's just a lot of history. My partner was Rotarian, but Joe Mack was a Quanian, so I never figured out quite why he did it. But, uh, but, but those were interesting times. Especially see my, my parent, my father's old next door neighbor, Jack Corn. My father's in the retail business just a couple of miles from here. Jack Corn had a little bitty distributorship. Uh, as, as he pioneered Quaker Oil Company. They kind of grew real fast, and Jack's a very successful businessman from these neck of the woods, but uh, my dad complained, we were in the retail business, so he liked to get there early and stay late, but he said he never could beat the Corn Brothers there, and he could never, he always lived before they did. So Jack, it's good to see you, and just what a good businessman you've been in this county, and a good Rotarian. As pointed out, we do have Joseph, Michelle, Cheryl, uh, Griff, and Johnny all here. Like I say, they're uh, Quantian spies, but uh, we're delighted to have you. But uh, we have a. <laughs> but, but before I start, I want to say I, the size of eight employees and staff we have, led by Bill Bruton and Chief Fim of the Police and Ron Moore of the BLW, um, I work with the greatest people in the world. We don't always have unanimous votes, but I tell you, we, we don't make the paper either, which is, but you respect, after a vote's taken, we usually, we walk away together. Look, um, a few fellas might be ruffled, but it, it kind of ends there, but I want to just say how welcome in to work with you today. Well, to get back at it, Chief of Bill, if you can tell me when to cut. And I want to say hello to my wife. Usually, I'm watching her facial expressions as I talk. And uh, thank goodness she's watching it on video, but um, she will remind me I'm not as smart as I think I am by the time I get home. But, uh, but, but I would want to say, like, uh, in the tale of two cities, these are, these are the best of times, the worst of times. Some say 2020 is going to be best seen in the Zerge as it hits our rearview mirror. But yet this might be a year of growth, of um, uh, 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 preservation, faith, reinvestment, and self-examination by all of us. Everything we're all going through, it could happen in Portland, it could happen in Minneapolis, it could happen in um, any town in this country, but it's all happened to all of us. You know, just, there's just a, a lot of things that go. But I would want to point out that 2020 roared in like an out, uh, a lion. We had a great year to start. In Marietta, we were celebrating the state championship team. I want to point out the coach. 
Debbie and Ray. Like Johnny Walker, I didn't miss the play, was there every week, but I think the real reason he did, we bought all the coaches of state dinner before the season started. But, uh, but we got, but that was just an amazing year, and just for the company, uh, this whole uh, community, and just at one o'clock in the morning, I was being fussed at by my wife, but I was at the Waffle House near me at a high school, and you just saw young people of every size, shape, they're celebrating. It just brought a lot to this community as we welcomed the team home. After that, we had a celebration parade for, from Lemon Street High School, which was located at Cole and Lemon Street. The Hornets had won the state champion in 1965 under Coach Ben Wilkins, and he coined, I guess, the, the phrase and the meaningful phrase would be somebody, and it was in their last year of existence. I just have a lot of respect for that school that they could had that grave of ball club. And Lemon Street was had the best band and they scored in the hundreds several times. Amazing outfit. And then the city of Marietta did the right thing and we've been proud ever since. Uh, we had a first full year of, it, of integration and the 1967 MHS Blue Devils won a state championship. Pete, you can wait. Pete played on that team. I was the only one <laughs> Well, since he brought that up, Coach Wilton told me one time he thought uh, Pete was a great blocker because he could hold his ground. They found out later he was just slow. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you don't try to die. And Warren played on a, did y'all win the state championship in 1961? Almost. Almost. The, the young man from Albany came up to Grant Field and played well. But we had an extraordinary team and that was a great group of guys that you played with. But um, we'd like to go over there, but also like in early 2020, we had a brand new uh, professional rugby team. The Rugby Atlanta caught the attention of Marietta, had officers play their home games at um, Life College. The Line of United with their strong youth leagues were there too, and, and their state-of-the-art training, but their season came to a quick halt. It's, it's back, but it sputtered a little bit. They need to score a goal or two here or there. Got a new coach. Franklin Gateway Sports Complex. Um, one of our magnificent parks that, that came about from the 2009 parks bond issue, Mr. Dunaway. And um, it was going very active. Had uh, other sports like lacrosse to play there. Then it came to all. I'm proud to say these stuff. We purchased the historic depot from the state of Georgia. Uh, in, in early part of this year, and also uh, DMDA bought the old downtown parking lot, which was the old w and a uh, railroad uh, parking facility. We had our annual incremental sidewalk project that went uh, down Roswell Street on the south side from Atlanta Street to Waddell Street, and you know that was finished. Everything was looking good. And then our farmer's market, as usual, was off, rain or shine, was off to a great start. And even junk, the farmers were recognized by the Georgia Commission of Agriculture for leadership in bringing Georgia-grown agriculture products to come. So everything was a great, and, and, but the farmer's market closed for two months, it's, it's back, and it's doing well. In January, we were, the city, just to talk about the city government itself, GMA and Georgia Municipal Association and Georgia Tree of Vision presented Marietta with a Visionary Award in January of this year. Uh, and it honored a very special place. Um, our parks redid Elizabeth Porter, uh, recognized the old historic canteen that was there, rec center that, there for years. If Reggie would have been here, that's where Reggie Councilman Copeland taught Dale Ellis how to shoot threes years ago, so, which he used uh, for the Seattle uh, NBA team. The Marietta Cooperative Hospital was there with Dr. Weddington and we brought in the arts community and the, we built a mural to recognize the leaders in Baptist Town uh, community. Uh, from there, a the special note, the Georgia Municipal Association is dynamic. Uh, sometimes you hear governors and presidents fuss at cities, but I'd hate to see this country without cities, and I think Marietta's one that glorifies it too. But it represents 530 cities, and I would um, like to praise that our Mayor Pro Tem, Michelle Cooper Kelly, is, is in the rotation to be Marietta's first president of GMA since Red Ather Atherton some 60 years ago. And that's a quite an honor, Michelle. <laughs> 
we were, early in the year, we were awarded the 2020 All-American City Hall of Fame. Only two, they picked one city out of the entire nation to do this and this for distinctive service. And we were, in fact, only the second one inducted into it. We qualified, first, I think, by being an All-American City in 2006, and we kept that bar, and we'd earn it today if we had it. Uh, we had Crown Communities Award recognize the city for its connectivity, especially for the travel safety app. I, I see Devin there. This, while I was coming here, coming down Waverly Way, my app went off and there was, a, there was a rescue vehicle that went through that light. So I was glad to have it. I mean, you hear it, but you still want to go. So uh, my app stopped me from going. But all our first responder vehicles are hooked up and it's hooked up into all our red lights and other uh, cautionary. So if you go online or call Bill, you can find out how to get it. But it's, it's nice to have. But we're one of the leaders in the whole country in having that connectivity. Uh, just and out of the blue, near the end of the year, we voted the most generous city by GoFundMe. Uh, it was they did per capita giving, and it was no politics. No, it was just a fact. And I think each and every one of us will see how generous this city, this county, these organizations are. We were proud around Martin Luther uh, King celebration to re rededicate the Lawrence Street Rec Center where it became the Hugh L. Grogan Community Center. This honored a citizen, a man who opened doors for many by being the first elected African American on the Marietta City Council, both by vote, and he also had to, to go through the ju judicial system to get there. So he was, he was a pioneer that helped uh, Marietta and Cobb County come forward. And we're delighted to name that rec center after him. However, even though I'm supposed to talk about economics, you, you can't avoid what's upon us. And March brought a brand new reality. We were hearing about this disease and on the West Coast, overseas. And then all of a sudden, we get calls saying that Dobbins was going to have a hospital for the coronavirus. And we had a hotel in Marietta on, that was converted to a coronavirus. And we didn't know what it was, and all of a sudden, we found out. And then, you know, today, the last time I looked, I guess they're counting the numbers now, we had 304 deaths in Cobb County in the last six months, over 11,000 cases, but it looks better. And I always look at 30060 and 30064, and 30060 has had around 40, and 30064 has around 19. That's the majority of Marietta. There are other zip codes, but they're, they're partial. But this, this disease has been uh, personal and, and brought to us individually all over this country. And you see more and more people wear masks, more people are tuned. We have regular, we use sometimes strong language in our buildings about, we, we have a mayor that, and council that we did use the word mandatory. We, we know the government might not like it, but there's no sanction. It is meant you, you need to take care of your friends and wear a mask, and we're, we've done that. Uh, but during this time, your city of Marietta government has maintained its core function as an as, essential service provider, acting with health care precautions to take, protect both its citizens and its staff. Seventy percent of our employee duties have to be, they have to be available for contact or working away from, uh, or working out in the field like our police, our firemen, our code enforcement. We, you can't call in from home, so we had to stay very active on a voluntary basis, and, uh, but as we had no option for uh, call in. During this state of emergency, we had 80 employees who continued to serve and provide daily services. For example, as in, I don't know where Patricia Witt is, or I want her to, pay. listen, our BLW, which is a, a major pride for us as we own our own electrical business, and we're part of MEAG, Municipal, Municipal Electric Association of Georgia. In May, we were down 20.6%. Just show the, the financial aspect. But by May, but by July, we were only down 3.1%. So there's functions of this commodity that are working. I, I'm going to avoid anything that has unemployment, but most of our businesses are still going and using our facility, and I think we're set up for a good comeback when the time is right. And here's where I ask 
the subject to Trisha Pridemore agreeing with me as our commissioner, we're investing in Vogel 3 and 4 in generation, uh, in Vogel generation, and it's still scheduled for the 1121 to open, uh, and then 4 will be open 1122. They have had um, COVID challenges down there, but sometimes the less employees they have on the ground, the, the quicker they go. But um, I hope Ms. Prime Moore is, is back there shaking her head saying yes, but um, we're a little bit a part of Southern Cup and Georgia Power, and we appreciate what y'all have done to keep them going. Support, um, how the city mayor has supported, we've had extended deadlines and payments, uh, such as for licensing. Uh, we've had online permitting is a, a great time saver and, and uh, does not have near the contact. We've allowed property uh, tax payments to be paid in two installments this coming year. Uh, we've had no cutoff for BLW customers early on. I see Sherry Shad in the back, who is our uh, customer service person, and she does a she, raise your hand a little bit, a little higher. She's a good mayor to high school graduate with us too. Been with the BLW for a few years, and, uh, but but a delightful person. But you know that extra thing. You know, not only do we want to sell electricity, we got to take care of a customer, and she's the has dealt with many people. We have 44,000 customers, and a lot of them have lost jobs. Their buildings have been curtailed, and it's just people like Sherry that have worked with people. Uh, but our, our zoning kept going, our public safety, our permitting, sanitation, road work, et cetera, sustained delivery. I can't imagine the city myriad if our sanitation people, every morning I kept waiting for Bill to call and say they didn't show up. But I tell you, we heroes don't have to make eight million dollars a year playing ball. We have some outstanding heroes that kept this city going. And Bill, I'd like to uh, thank you and your staff. And our council kept, because we have to be transparent and open, we chose, we didn't go to virtual and all the Zoom. We kept meeting. I mean, we had all kind of regulations. You couldn't eat, but I mean, you couldn't sit in certain spots, but um, we kept going in person. As COVID-19 and equality and social justice nationwide discussions have dominated our lives, we're, we're very cognizant of each other and how we can help each other in these times and how we respect our fellow men. And it falls upon us as individuals, civic organizations, chambers, and, and especially governments. I tell you, I was privileged 30 years ago, for those you remember, the one that addressed human issues best I ever heard was a Dr. Betty Siegel, president of Kennesaw State University. And she did it by giving a speech based on a small little essay called, All I Really Need to Know is What I Learned in Kindergarten. Uh, Robert Fulgham wrote this uh, essay, poem, if you will, but she stole it from him. I mean, she gave us the human of how well it should be. She pointed out that um, you need to share, balance work, play, and rest, clean up your own mess, say you're sorry when you are wrong. Do you hear that, Jean Alice? That's, my <laughs> no, that's me to her, not her to me. But it's fun when she's not here. I can have a little bit more fun. Great man. <laughs> <laughs> but flush, beware when you cross the street. Watch out for each other and hold hands and um, stick together. But I think those are general principles that we have to practice both as entities, individuals, and as government. And, but from there, I want to bring up Dr. Siegel because she was a great friend. She passed this spring. In her celebration of life as KSU was not, was not able to be held. But also they just reflect on how many folks in these last six months because of restriction funerals that getting done. I mean, to me that's one of the heartbreaks of uh, the challenge of COVID-19 is how little things like your final goodbyes weren't able to be held. Um, but as I can't be Betty Siegel, I want to steal from, uh, in looking at 2020, Bard, the AJC sports writer, Furman Bishop, he gave an annual Thanksgiving column on thankfulness. So that was easier for me to frame in what I've seen happen greatly in this community. 
I'm thankful for Wellstar Kennestone for 70 years in our community, and especially for the medical heroes that it brings to serve our region daily, 24-7. Uh, amazing uh, health care facility and amazing people that work there. It evolved from the doctor's hospital that was on Cherokee Street and the Marietta Cooperative Hospital where Elizabeth Porter is now. And Dr. Knox, as you know, they've recently opened the emergency department edition of 263,000 square feet, serving 60 patients daily and 220,000 annually. This is the doubling of the hospital's trauma and emergency capacity and will be one of the top busiest EDs in the United States. Additionally, the new bridge over Church Street makes for a grand gateway uh, down lovely Church Street to our city. But as mayor, I'd like to point out, this is a tremendous economic contributor to our city. So we're, de we're delighted in every way that Wellstar chose and Kennestone chose to be right here in Marietta. Uh, I'm thankful to see Rich Bush. I'm thankful for our 2009 parts bonds and the way we spent the money. Especially, I don't know if it's legal for me to say, our continuous support of cities and counties through the SPLOS. I didn't ask for anybody to vote for it, but uh, we've had over 20 years, and you can really see it now, the streetscape, the sidewalks, and you especially have seen how the people have used the parks, the streetscape, and, the, and their sidewalks in their neighborhood as more and people are, are walking. I, I've seen neighbors I didn't know existed when you walk down the street. I see Dawn walk by every day, pulling her do dogs behind her, and, <laughs> and sometime her husband, who's used about 60 yards behind her, but <laughs> Dawn walks fast, because when she was trained well, Dawn, as you remember, when we led up the street from me, we'd, we'd see Dawn when she was eight years old, carrying her suitcase when she ran away from home. <laughs> and my wife, Jean Alice, would call Dawn, and she said, don't worry, she'll be back. <laughs> you owe me. <laughs> That's just half the story. But I do also, I'm thankful for the educational opportunities for our very young citizens through our media city school system, our four colleges, our private and Christian schools, and how each has adapted to sustain our strong educational system. From preschool to obtain an advanced degree or special occupational training, one does not have to leave, leave the city of Marietta to get a full education. Thankful for our 75-year-old mayor of the Housing Authority. I've already made in front of our executive director, Pete Waldrop, but I'd like to point out the chairman of the board, uh, Colonel Dollar, who's our chairman, and I'm gonna brag on him a little bit, but that's a good match. Pete being a, a ball player, and Ken had that dangerous job of being a NFL referee for years. I don't know how you avoided those big men, but I'm glad you're still here, Colonel, but I do want to point out in this day and age where we talk about affordable housing, they have delivered for 75 years. Um, affordable, senior housing, and even all the many changes of HUD, without a doubt, they're the best and most effective housing authority in our state. And as their mission is to provide housing vouchers, not only affordable, but quality housing. I'm thankful for most ministries calling Mayor to home, and we've seen their value. Uh, several months ago, at the end of the year, we had a a zoning discussion, and our, our council voted unanimously to welcome their zoning. They're gonna build a $10, $10 million project there at Bells Ferry in 41. But um, what they've done in the last four months to feed the hung hungry has been amazing. We're glad that they came in. And we're glad that they're a citizen, Marietta. We're thankful for our strong faith community through our churches, um, restricted from weekly services. That, um, even though they're restricted, they've kept the doors open to serve others during them pandemic times. We have over 100 churches in this community, and we, um, we really need them, and we're glad they're here. We're thankful that the VA clinic recently chose Marietta for a location. It's where the extension, the zone, the Cobb Board of Health, the Cobb Community Service Board, Cobb Community Foundation, Marietta Museum of History, and our many retirement nursing homes. Um, providing special needs and support. We're thankful for our arts community, tourism, Holly, and our service industries, restaurants and th theaters who have been hammered the last six months, but still the heart of our community awaiting. We have, without joy, watched Memorial Day 
July the 4th parades, um, concert in the park, arts in the park, art walk, uh, taste of Marietta, and I see Sally, Chuck, October 5th. Um, Michelle knocked that last week. It's not going to happen this year. And um, so, right, you see Sally, you need to do two things pat on the back and say, uh, bless your heart, and write her a check. <laughs> yeah. we, we, You know, Pastor Barb and I were talking. All those things profoundly affected our community. We were talking about the Memorial Day ceremony not being here. So we look forward to next year of all these coming back. And we look forward to having a full time around the Marietta Square with a lot of great things happening as we, we need to welcome those people back. Um, also, we're thankful for the 900 plus. We've got to have some economic news. For the 900 plus housing needs that are approved and starting, um, offering strong residential housing and a $300 million investment in, in Marietta. Great new communities made up of single family detached and townhouses by quality developers and builders. Thankful for our still standing businesses, and, you know, with the help of the chamber now that's th with the county, Lisa and Joanne are, are uh, offering loans and helping give them contact to other services to keep them alive. These are our friends and neighbors, and I encourage in each and every one of you to think locally. You don't have to go on Amazon. Everything you want is within three miles of your house. And so think locally for all your needs, your restaurant needs, and opt to buy locally to support your local businesses and especially your neighbors who work there. Thankful for the 800 City Merit of, uh, team who have served diligently and faithful during this pandemic and how they worked in a collaborative manner with others, especially with Okaf County government, to which we are grateful for their sharing three million with the city in the CARES Act and 10 million combined for all the cities. So we all have a delightful relationship between the six cities and Cobb County government, and I think it shows in our success. Thankful for awarding our extraordinary first responders. Shout out to Coach, I mean to Chief Flynn and Chief Milligan, and again, like it, the only thing I asked Chief Flynn to say about me in the introduction is that he's my friend, and I'm proud to call him friend, just like I do our mayor of staff. But they selflessly protect and serve and go into situations I never could dream I could go into, and we're very proud of them. We appreciate how our community and public safety have worked together. It's like every other city, we have had peaceful protests. Ours have been protests to the credit of our citizens and um, our our public safety. It's been a very time of, of communication and expressing your needs for a better America. And we've had over a dozen uh, peaceful protests which were done in cooperation with the police and the city, and, and especially the, uh, the young, and now it's more and more young people uh, that are protesting. But thankful for our community volunteers, our civic orga organizations such as Rotary and the Chamber, our co host for today. Um, but all our civic clubs, and especially the chamber, give so much for the good of this community, especially during these pandemic times. Thankful that we together will persevere, improve, and spring forth with new energy, fortitude, and strength to make a viable Marietta for all 2020, for and by 2021. Look, I'm not being negative, but I am looking forward to New Year's Eve when we can <laughs> celebrate. <laughs> the ending of 2020 and celebrate a healthy and prosperous new year for 2021. Especially look forward to again worrying about potholes, parking and traffic and enjoying the active endeavors of this vibrant Marietta. Again, hello again and God bless you. <laughs>